Well, good morning, and um, thank you very much for this extraordinary honor. Um, thank you for allowing me to be part of your very special day and for uh, meeting, meeting you all, for being alongside such a brave journalist as Lisa Dissette. And, uh, and I congratulate all of you who have actually worked for your degree, um, unlike me who gets it for free. And thank you to Michael for the very generous things he said. I wish it were all true, but um, I hope so. And I, I wondered on the train coming down what, what I might say. And the more I thought, the more I thought I should apologize. I should apologize to those of you who are getting your degree and starting your career because the world we've given you is far less than the world my generation inherited. My generation inherited a world where the public good was something we understood. The people who went before us decided that never again would they tolerate a world with mass unemployment. They determined never again would they tolerate a world of war. And in that spirit, we owned things. We owned the gas, the electric, the water, the railways, the coal mines, the steel industry. We built the National Health Service because we believed we were our brother's keeper and our sister's keeper. And it was a world of compassion and caring for your neighbor where the, the state would take care of the welfare of its citizens. Everyone had the right to work to a job that would sustain them for their working lives and afterwards. That's not the world we're passing to you. And that's our fault. And the generation that came after me. And for that we have to apologize to you. Because the task you face to recover that is colossal. Most of you, many of you I hope will, will find work, some will not. And those that find work will find it's temporary. You'll find you're expected to work for nothing. You'll find zero hours contracts. You'll have periods with no work. I spoke to someone yesterday, a graduate out of university for two or three years she went to see a company in, in our business, the same business as Lise Dusset and, and I, a company that makes programs for BBC Prime Time with a very famous man at the front, David Attenborough. And she was told, yes, there was work. Yes, there was work. She could write for that company what would she get paid? Nothing. Nothing. Her labor was worth nothing. And that's the world we're passing on. 
where interns are expected to work for nothing. And that means that that work is available if you're rich enough to be given money in those months. So for ordinary people from ordinary families, they work for nothing. So doors close to them. That's the world we're passing on. There's lots to say about this, and I know it's cold, but there was one thing I read again yesterday that I wanted to share with you. And it's, it's a quotation from a Department of Work and Pensions decision, and it refers to when claimants who've had their benefits stopped, and of course, you will know here that claimants can have their benefits stopped because they couldn't make an appointment because they had to go to hospital, for example. Or one example, when their wife was giving birth, they missed an appointment, their benefits were stopped. If your benefits are stopped, you're entitled to something called a hardship payment but, and this is the interesting point. According to the rules, and I'm quoting here, it would be usual for a normal healthy adult to suffer some deterioration in their health. And that's normal and to be expected. So in that case, you don't get a hardship payment so consider that your state, your government is prepared for you to suffer ill health because you have no work. That's the world that we pass to you. Where's the welfare of our citizens in that? Where's the care that we should take of each other in that? That's a cruel world. It's a wicked world. It's a world of conflict, and you have to change it. Lisa very properly commented on the great support shown to the French when those politicians and statesmen went to show their solidarity with the people who had been attacked. What a pity that some of those statesmen and politicians were leading their states into torture, violence, and illegal occupation, and yet went to head that procession. And one of the skills that you will have honed in your time here is to see through that hypocrisy. And you need to do it. But what is different for your generation is that now there is an end game. Because the world the physical world is collapsing. We know the ice caps are melting. You can't look forward to centuries of a future for your children, grandchildren, and their grandchildren. You have to make the changes soon. And I think we have to rediscover the sense of collective strength not individual. Your neighbor is your comrade and your colleague, not your competitor and your enemy. And that's the world that I hope you will build. And I just want to end with two quotations. One, they're contrasting. One is from a figure you will know very well, 
who's on your television a lot, Alan Sugar, a businessman. And he was quoted as saying, there's nothing wrong with being greedy. If you're a businessman, that's what it's all about. Contrast that with a man who I think has rather more to offer, the writer John Donne, who wrote at the time of Shakespeare, and he wrote this, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to, hove to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Thank you for this, it's a really great honor, thank you.